Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, we're gonna revisit Inkbird temperature controllers. This time one with a single probe that's not Wi-Fi controlled, but it does have heating and cooling elements. We're gonna check out the Inkbird 308S. All right, so a little while ago, I did a uh, review on the Inkbird Wi-Fi controlled aquarium controller. It had two probes, it was connected to Wi-Fi, and whilst it had two outlets, they were both for the heating circuit. Now, I had two gripes with this controller, the first one being that I couldn't do much with Wi-Fi other than use their app to set the temperature, which granted was fantastic, much better than pressing buttons, but it also had a little bit of trouble connecting with other devices to uh, turn fans and things on. And realistically, the main reason why I want uh, temperature controllers is to be able to control a heater and a fan. Um, now, Inkbird were pretty good. They saw that review. They saw that it was honest feedback. And they said, why don't you try our uh, 308S uh, aquarium controller, which fixes a few of those issues. Firstly, we go to a single probe. And it is an aquarium-proof probe in that it uh, is not one of those metal-capped probes. It's the uh, plastic probe. And what I like about this one, too, is that it's actually removable and replaceable. So this is just a standard uh, headphone jack. You can pick uh, these probes up online or you can buy replacements from Inkbird. Should you ever have an issue with the probe itself, it doesn't mean you have to pull the unit apart and uh, rewire it. Also means routing this probe can be a lot easier because you can just feed that through rather than um, having to sort the whole unit out. But the most important thing for me is that we get both, if I can get the writing around the right way, both cooling and heating outlets. This is a godsend with temperature controllers because as we're heading to these hot summer months in Australia, being able to plug a fan or even your chiller, but even something as cheap as a fan onto your tank so that as soon as the temperature gets above your set level, the fan kicks on, goes a long, long way to keeping your temperatures in check. So that was the primary thing I was after. Now, there is one downside to this controller. This unit is not Wi-Fi connected. Some say downside, some say upside. It removes a little bit of the complexity, removes a bit of the expectation that you're going to be able to control Wi-Fi outlets and things elsewhere, but it does mean we have to uh, program it through the buttons here. So save me rabbiting on much longer. Let's get the camera down over this unit. I'll plug it in. We'll go through how to set it up and then we'll get it on the tank. All right, so here we are. We've got our uh, Inkbird powered up. I've got my instructions here that I'm going to follow through. Got the uh, probe plugged in and nothing plugged into the uh, outlets. You can see that uh, on display here, we've got the set value, which is set to 25 degrees, and uh, the current value, which is 25.1. If I hold my hand over the temperature probe, within a second, we should see that start to creep up because I'm fairly warm at the moment. It's uh, strange weather. All right, it's starting to creep up now. So you can see the, the probe doesn't react too quickly, but it does uh, eventually go up. Now, my instructions here say that to get into the uh, control settings, um, I need to hold down the set button for three seconds. So I'm gonna hold that down now, two, three, and then it should say TS, which is set for temp, or it's short for temperature set. Now currently we're at 25 degrees Celsius, which is exactly where I want the uh, aquarium set. So that's the base temperature I want to uphold. So I'm just gonna hold down that button again because I was talking for a little bit long. We've got temperature set, which is 25 degrees and we're flashing. Now if I press, press set again, we move on to the heating differential value, which is currently two degrees. Now that's too much for my uh, likings. What that basically means is the, the variance that you will let the temperature controller go through. The lowest we can go is 0.3, which means if I've got it set to 25, I'm happy with it going from 20, um, 24.7 up to 25.3. That's my happy zone. Below that, it's gonna turn the heater on. Above that, it's gonna turn the fan on. So I'm gonna go with 0 0.3. If I press set again, we go to the, uh, oh, actually no, we go to the cooling differential value, which means I can set different range for above and below. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna set this to 0.3 as well though, just because um, I already said that I would. So this will be, if it gets more than 0.3 above our 25.0, uh, it's going to uh, turn the fan on. That's really cool. All right, next setup is alarm high. Now this will tell us what setting, what temperature do we want it to start beeping like mad, telling us that we've gone over temperature. I can tell you now, I don't want it at 120, degree, 120 degrees Celsius because uh, by then everything is absolutely, quite literally boiled. So I'm just gonna hold the down button. We're gonna bring that right down to something like uh, maybe 32, 33, something like that. All 
All right, 32 degrees Celsius. Now I can press the uh, set button again. That'll get us into the alarm low. Now uh, I'm gonna turn that up a fair bit because uh, if the aquarium gets to minus 40 degrees Celsius, again, the fish are gonna be pretty, uh, they won't be cooked this time, they'll be frozen. So it's gonna have to hold this button down for a second. I'll speed the video up just so we can uh, get to the next step quicker. And there we have it, 20 degrees Celsius. If it gets below that, it's gonna set the alarm. Now we'll press set again to set that value and we move on to the uh, PT. I'm not sure what PT is. It's meant to be, oh, sorry, it says here, I just need to read the instructions. Believe it or not, PT is compressor delay and I've just jumped out because I took too long, but that's okay. We'll jump back through TSHD, C, D, A, H, alarm low and PT, a compressor delay. Now what this setting is, is it if you have a chiller or a fridge or something like that that has a compressor set to it, you can actually set a delay on there because if you have your temperature range too narrow and it's switching on, off, on, off, on, off, you can actually damage uh, the compressor in your chiller or fridge. As I'm gonna be using this device to switch fans on and off, I actually don't care for that. So I'm gonna turn that to zero and then we'll go over to the next setting, which is our uh, temperature calibration. I'm gonna assume the probe is perfect for now, but if I ever wanna dial it in or cross-reference against another uh, temperature probe, I can do so here. I'm gonna leave it at zero and press set. We come across to our temperature unit, which is currently Celsius. We can switch to Fahrenheit, but I'm gonna go back to Celsius. And then we press set for three seconds. And that's it. Our ink bird is now set and forget. We don't need to do anything else. We don't need to worry about using Wi-Fi sockets or anything like that. We've got our heating channel. We've got our cooling channel. We've got a single aquarium proof probe and we're good to go. So the last thing really now is to pop this on the tank. Um, I could do some footage of that for you guys, but uh, I think you guys know how to set these up in your tank. You plug the uh, power into an outlet. You put the probe somewhere in your tank. The only tip I would give is to zip tie. I would not trust the uh, suction cup here. I would zip tie the probe somewhere so that it is always underwater. The last thing you want is that probe coming up out of the water. Your controller starts measuring the air temperature instead of the water temperature and cooks your tank or freezes your tank. Thankfully with the alarms on the ink bird, you're gonna get some warning at least right before you just smell fish. But uh, I would still go to the trouble of zip tying that into your tank. And I mean, you don't need me to tell you how to plug the fan into the cooling side and the heater into the heating side. If you need more than one fan or more than one heater, put a double adapter or a power board, it's fine. These units can handle 10 amps, which in Australia that's 2,400 watts. Um, that's a lot of cooling. Most fans are like, well, it depends on the size of your fan, I guess, but probably like 30 watts. So you can plug a lot of fans into this unit, a lot of heaters into this unit. The other thing to remember is you're not gonna be heating and chilling at the same time. The unit will make sure that you don't do that. So it should pay for itself in power savings if you're running a uh, chiller. Believe it or not, despite what you think you set your heater and chiller at, there will be a considerable amount of time when they're working against each other, unless your chiller is the heater as well. A device like this will make sure that only one or neither is powered up at any given time. Done, simple as that. Thanks for watching guys, till next time, keep reefing. Cheers, bye. <music>